All right, we're gonna tie fly that I have used a ton in the winter. Uh, and it's been really good for me. Uh, for whatever reason, our redfish here in North Carolina, uh, especially where I am, when, when the water's really clear, they tend to really like white. Um, so we're gonna tie this in all white, but you can definitely tie it in a bunch of different color variations. And this is a, it's a good example of like taking the redfish crack and then just switching out some of the materials and uh, just kind of coming up with your own thing. Um, I call this the chromatic critter just because of one of the materials that we use. Um, and I'm sure there's other flies out there like it, but uh, this is just one that I came up with and it's worked for me pretty well. And uh, hopefully it works for you too. So we're gonna start with, this is a size two Umqua X series uh, saltwater jig hook. And uh, like I said, we're gonna tie this all in white. So I'm gonna start with my 210 Ultra Thread all in white. So we'll go ahead and wrap this all the way to the back. Just go a little bit past the point of the hook. And I already got some craft fur cut here. Uh, I'm just gonna clean it up a little bit. Um, but you could use you could use a bunch of different materials here on the back. You could use um, other types of craft fur. You could use polar fiber. I'm sure you could use like some sort of feathers. Um, but I tend to like these uh, these fibers. I think it just gives it some good movement. So we got that locked in. I'll clean this up just a little bit. Looks good. Um, and then next, we're just gonna put in some flashaboo. I got this uh, accent pearl that I think looks good with the white. So I'm gonna cut off about, about four strands. And I'm gonna split this around my thread here. I'm just try and get four strands coming out each side. Next, I'm just gonna grab one silly leg. This is like a clear and black barred. I'm gonna do the same thing here. I'm gonna split it around my thread there. I'm just gonna work it back. Pull these legs apart. I'm just trying to keep them as even as possible on either side of the fly. Looks pretty good. All right. Next thing I'm gonna do, this is Palmer Chenille in medium pearl. And I'm gonna cut off about, I don't know, Maybe four inches. Tie this in. Put that thread back forward a little bit. I'm just gonna palmer this on. And you can kind of pull these fibers back as you're going, but we're going to go back over it a bit with the thread so you don't have to worry about it looking. It looks a little crazy right now, and that's okay. Okay, 
end it right about there. Back up, lock it in. Snip off this excess. I'll pull all these fibers back. Just work my thread backwards a little bit. See if we can get them to lay down just a tad. That looks good right there. Perfect. Um, then the next material we're going to use is this EP Sparkle Brush, and it's one inch, and um, it's in the blue magic color. Again, we'll probably this I might cut off a little bit more, maybe maybe five inches or so. Again, you usually don't want to use your knife scissors for this, but mine are already extremely dull from doing that. Uh, and then we're gonna palmer this on. Just pulling back those fibers as you work your way forward. See right about there, it looks good. Work my thread back, lock it in. Snip off this excess. And I'm gonna cut my thread. Go back in and lock this up. Let me go back over it just a little bit because I cut my thread there. There we go. And I'm gonna go ahead and tie in my eyes and we're using medium nickel just to kind of go along with the theme of this all white fly. figure eights and some parachute wraps to lock it in there we go. work my thread back then we're going to put in our last material which is what gives this fly its name um, which is the Sinyo chromatic inch and a half I think you could get away with, a, um, with an inch of this material uh, and it being an inch wide, because I generally with this inch and a half, we have to cut a little bit off uh, when we're done with it, when we're trimming it. So fold that back there, get back over it. And then I'm gonna work my thread forward and then end it, leave my thread hanging there in front of the eyes. And same thing, just gonna palmer this on. Try and work those, work those fibers back as you go forward. Doesn't matter if some of them get trapped, but, uh, cause we'll go back, we'll pick it out here in a, when we're done with this part of it. One more wrap here, and then I'll bring this brush 
in front of the eyes there. And we'll try and lock it in place there. Snip that off, try and not cut my thread this time. I'll just pull all these loose fibers up here back if I can. And go back over with the thread. Once you get to that point, you can go ahead and whip finish it. grab tool to uh, try and pick this out. You can use a bucket, you can use a brush, whatever's, whatever you got laying around. And just go through and kind of pick this out as best you can. See how this, I think this in an inch instead of an inch and a half would be a little bit better for this fly, but we'll clean it up. Alright, so we got it there. We're just gonna go ahead, pull some of these fibers up. Just gonna give them a haircut at an upward angle. Do the same thing on the bottom. And I'll just kind of try and trim off some of these hairs that are just going really wild. Take it out and shake it a little bit. Get my lighter. Quick zap here. Get some of these fibers that are caught up in the eye out. That's good. Then all you need to do now is just put whatever glue you want to put here. I'd probably use, well, I use um, epoxy for most things. Um, but if you got one that you like, just put it on your thread up there at the top. That's pretty much it. I mean, you can trim up. I got some long flash back here I would trim up just to make it not quite as long. Um, this, like I said, this is a, this has been a really good fly for me in the winter, especially in clear water, um, and fish seem to love it. So.